This is the Basis Pico Go AM41. It's a 10,000 milliamp battery pack, but I do have a bit of an issue with what's on this packaging. Now to find out what this year's best G2 wireless battery pack is, I bought 20 plus of them, tortured the USB-C port, melted my iPhone by doing wireless charging sprints, reviewer, not influencer, and also I had to figure out how to do some coding in order to drain the packs in iPhone consistently. This is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack. It has a 36 watt hour capacity. This thing only has three PDOs, but it does come with a PPS charging rate. Your battery level is indicated by a series of uh, little dots. I am getting tired of staring at little dots. There is one battery pack that has a smart display. So this ESR pack, that's the one I'm gonna review next. Now in terms of accuracy and stability for this product, pulling the charging protocols from this product was a little tricky. It would fail several times and then I have to leave it alone in order for it to sort itself out. When it comes to real world capacity, I pulled 27.1 watt hours. Now the issue I have with the marketing on the box is that it says it's 27 watts, but it only holds 27 watts for a uh, limited time. So it starts at 27, then it goes to 18 and then it drops down to 12, which means to recharge this pack took almost three hours. That's really long. USB-C is just such a dumpster fire. So at the end, of the day I got 27 watt hours out for every 39.9 watt hours I put in. That's a 68% efficiency, which isn't bad. But here's the thing, I've only fully tested two products out of the 20. Now, when it came to the old battery banks, an efficiency of 70% was really good. With the MagSafe uh, Qi 2 uh, ones, we'll see kind of what the average for those products will be. Now, when it came to Qi Chu charging, this thing basically failed the first test because it gave me 4% in 30 minutes. Terrible. Did the test a bunch more times, and on average, it's about 25% in 30 minutes, which isn't bad. Now, in order for this to give the iPhone 25% or 3.45 watt hours, it took this battery bank 8.83 watt hours, which is an efficiency of uh, 39%, which I think is not a good value because the previous one I reviewed, the Tiny 5K one was at 50%. Now in terms of thermals, this thing ran cooler during discharging, uh, but it got really warm during the uh, Qi 2 wireless testing. At almost 60 degrees Celsius, you can definitely feel the heat coming off of this battery pack. Now in terms of size and handling, this thing weighs 175 grams. This is definitely one of the slimmer packs that I've tested, especially when compared to the next one I'm gonna review. It's another 10K pack, uh, this kickstand thing from ESR, and it is definitely thinner than that. So in general, Basius doesn't really sacrifice performance uh, for size. Now when it comes to magnetic attachment strength, it took about eight newtons to push off the battery pack, and it took 26.4 newtons to pull it off. Now those values are good enough to keep your iPhone from falling if you grab it by the battery pack, but those values are below average based on all the ones I've tested. In terms of price and value, this thing is $70. So it's a very average priced product. I will say that Basius has a pricing problem because the uh, 5K version is 70, this 10K version is 70. The only difference really is this one's a lot smaller. Would I get it if I wasn't a reviewer? Even though I've only tested two products, the efficiency for this product in terms of G2 charging is so low that I would personally stay away from it, but we'll see. I've got 18 more products to review and maybe under 50% is normal. I hope not. I'm on a mission to figure out what the best T2 wireless battery pack is. If this product actually makes it into the top five, uh, make sure you use my link to uh, get it because I'm a reviewer not an influencer. I spent $1,400 buying all these packs to figure out what the best one is. That's just what I do. Thanks for watching.